for some strange reason, we have all 100 communities here. We've never had so many people. Thank you all for coming. Now, Cardinal Koch, President of the Jewish Community of Italy, Noemi Disegni, representatives of the Jewish communities around the world, your eminences, your excellencies. Let me say at the outset, as President of the World Jewish Congress, which represents 100 Jewish communities around the world, we greatly thank you for coming uh, and welcoming us so warmly. Thank you. And while, uh, and while we are here, um, let me say at this very historic place, and it's the importance of this day, for the first time in 2,000 years, the Vatican hosts an international Jewish organization in this symbolic place. Perhaps more importantly, we are mindful of the deeper meanings behind today's events and why we are here. With Nostra Aetate, the Catholic Church began by acknowledging certain basic truths that all people were drawing closer together as the ties between us grow stronger. In the moving words of Nostra Aetate came these universal truths that all religions struggle with the same mysteries of life. What does it mean to be human? What is the aim of our lives? What is sin? We all deal with death and the eternal questions that come after. Nostra Aetate told the world that the ties that bind us all as human beings are much stronger than the ones that separate us. Since 1965, those bonds, those ties have grown stronger. They've grown stronger and stronger because of what began here at the Vatican 60 years ago. On another level, Nostra Tate was even more specific. Its wording was direct and clear regarding the relationship between the Roman Catholic Church and the Jewish people. It stated, for all the world, world to hear, hatred, persecutions, displays of anti-Semitism directed towards Jews was not acceptable at any time and by anyone. At any time and by anyone. That message traveled across the world like a bolt of lightning, and the response of, in the Jewish community was a flash of tremendous gratitude. These words have been reaffirmed and amplified by every pope thereafter. Pope John Paul II advanced the dialogue between our two peoples. Pope Benedict XVI spoke of the continued dialogue of cooperation. Pope Francis has continually reached out to the Jewish people. And our presence here today is one more indication of the Pope's strong commitment to reconciliation. All this comes after centuries of violence directed at Jewish communities, simply because we were Jews and we chose to believe in our traditions. The violence began in the ancient times, continued through the Middle Ages, and it reached a crescendo within my lifetime in the 1940s with an event that still shocks the world to this day. Sadly, in many places around the world today, we see an increase in hatred towards Jews, which looks and sounds much like what we have seen before. This is one more reason Jews appreciate the support from the Catholic Church and Pope Francis. Two decades after the Holocaust, the Catholic Church once and for all declared anti-Semitism wrong at any time and by anyone. And for the Jewish people and for all of us, we say thank you. I would also note the importance of Pope Francis opening up the Vatican's archives to scholars so the history of the church during the papacy of Pius XII can be learned. It is only in the sunlight of truth that reconciliation can truly begin. That is the best and most just way for our two religions to move forward together. The Jewish people have a, have a beginning teaching, Tikkun Olam, that says it is our job to repair the world, to make it a better place for all people and for future generations. I believe that what the Catholic Church demonstrated and what Pope Francis has reinforced 
follows the teaching of Tikkun Olam. The Catholic Church has helped prepare the world, making it a better place for all people. I can't help but wonder what our forefathers over the past two millennia would have thought about today. The Roman Catholic Church hosting the World Jewish Congress here in this famous room. And more important, a kosher meal served in the Vatican. <laughs> no comments. <laughs> I'm sure they have, may have been surprised, but pleasantly so. Judaism is a community-based religion. We have no hierarchy. No single person speaks on behalf of all the Jewish people. What binds, what binds Jews together is our faith in God, our Torah, our Talmud, and our caring for each other in times of joy and in times of trouble. We are also bound by our land, decreed by God to Moses. Israel is absolutely vital to the Jewish people because of our historic roots there, because our forefathers built a temple there, because King David placed his capital in Jerusalem, where it continues to this day. Those of us here today are eager to promote our bond with the Catholic Church. Today, we launched the process of Kishre Nu, the Hebrew word for our bond. The, this begins the collective process. Each community will offer its input to be completed soon and to be presented to the Pope at a later date. Kishre Nu reinforces the, the common future of two people. It represents a new stage in the Catholic-Jewish bond. This bond has been growing in local communities all over the world for a long time. Long before this more formal occasion, local Jewish and Catholic communities reached out to each other. In New York, I have worked with its cardinals in private meetings and, and public events for more than 40 years. I will never forget Cardinal O'Connor's stirring words when he joined me at an event to mark the 50th anniversary of Kristallnacht in 1988. Cardinal Connor said, whoever wants to break a window, the Cardinal told us, come and break my window, because tonight I am Jewish. And while Catholics will protect Jews, Jews must also <coughs> protect Catholics and all Christians from harm. In 2014, I wrote, I wrote an article in the New York Times when I became frustrated that no one was speaking out in defense of Christian communities being devastated in parts of Africa and the Middle East. The title of the article was, Who Will Stand Up for the Christians? People asked, why is the president of the World Jewish Congress asking this question? My response, who better if it is the right thing to say? What does it matter who's saying it? Another wonderful example of this local fellowship can be found right here involves Pope Francis himself and one of our members here in this room today, when Jorge Bergoglio uh, was a bishop in Buenos Aires, he reached out to the local Jewish committee and became close with a young leader, Claudio Appleman. One of the few friends he has. <laughs> <laughs> This friendship wasn't directed by the Catholic Church or from Jewish leadership. It was simply two human beings, yes, from different faiths, but two human beings who shared the same values, wanted only good for one another, and frankly, liked each other. Isn't that the basis of any friendship? It is a friendship that lasts to this day. Frankly, this happens thousands of times throughout the world. Rabbis and priests, and lay people working together in times of crisis and tranquil times as well. Pope Francis is a leading example of our universal commitment to a better future. In some countries, in some local parishes, Nostra Tata has gone further than others, and we hope the Pope's words will truly be implemented everywhere. There is one more reason that the timing of this event is so important. It comes at a time of social breakdown, war, and people turning away from religion. We see the results of this exodus from organized religion, and they are not good. 
The plain fact is people need these moral foundations that religion gives us. Because when we leave the age-old rules that has, that has given human beings guidance for thousands of years, people too often find direction in new causes that are not just and show no mercy. Jews and Catholics share the same moral codes. They are found in the 10 basic rules of life that God gave to Moses on Mount Sinai. If people could simply follow these 10 commandments, their lives and the lives of others would be so much better. We share, we share even more. We share the strong desire for all religions, all the children of God, to live together in peace and harmony. We all, Jews and Catholics, have a common future. We will build that future together for a deeper, closer, and better coexistence for all people. We leave a difficult past behind. We don't forget it. We don't forget it at all. But we look forward together. And what could be better for all the children of God to live together in peace, harmony, and the house of the Lord forever? Finally, I speak here as president of the World Jewish Congress, but for a moment, well, for a moment I also speak as an American. Every American of a certain age has today's date forever in our memory. It was on this day, November 22, 1963, that beloved President John F. Kennedy was taken from us by assassination. President Kennedy was the first Catholic, um, Roman Catholic elected President of the United States. He was elected by one of the closest margins in American history, and he received vast support of the Jewish community, which helped elect him. President Kennedy was deeply mourned by all Americans Jews and non-Jews alike. He was mourned by Catholics everywhere throughout the world. But I think President Kennedy would be pleased if he knew that all these years later, the Jewish community and his Roman Catholic Church sit here together as brothers and sisters in the Vatican, forging a new alliance for the benefit of all mankind. As President Kennedy once said, in the final analysis, we all inhabit this small planet. We all breathe the same air. We all cherish our children's future. I will tell you, as the man who represents 100 Jewish communities around the world, what we do here today in this room reinforces that belief. We do this for our children and our grandchildren. We do this for all future generations. We repair the world, not for us, but for them. And we ask God's blessing as we take these steps for forward together. Thank you, and God bless you.